let's think for a moment about space. Actually, more specifically, a point in space. The question is, how do I get from my home to that point in space? Well, I can just wiggle around a little bit, of course, until I eventually get there, but the problem with that is, it's really easy to get lost and say I want to go there again. So let's refine that question. How do I get from home to a point in space while well, knowing where I'm going? And there are two ways that are in common use. Let's imagine my elbow is home and my end of my fingers is the point in space I want to get to. So we start off on a flat, an imaginary flat, and move by an angle up, an angle like that, and we can walk that way to the point. Should I want to go home, I walk back, angle, angle, and I'm home, and I can repeat that. That method is called polar coordinates. But of course, there's another way we can do it. We can just walk in a straight line, straight line, straight line, and we'll get to that point in space. That method is called Cartesian coordinates. And these are the two main methods of going to a point in space while knowing where you're going. And since surprisingly, this relates to 3D printing because of course, what a 3D printer has to do is place the print head somewhere at a point in space where it knows where that is and pop down a little bit of plastic. Those two methods are used in 3D printing. The first method with polar coordinates is used in a series of 3D printers called delta printers. Like Ethelson and Delta Go, they use those changing angles from the three legs they've got to move the head in the position it wants to be. And they tend to be very much faster, a little bit more expensive, but much more complicated and prone to falling down. So there is, of course, the Cartesian equivalent, which is the one most of us see. And they're the ones that use motors to take those steps along the x-axis, the y-axis, or the z-axis to move the print head in the position it wants to be in. They're more robust, but they're not nearly as accurate or as fast as the Delta printers, but they do tend to be cheaper and easier to use, which is probably why you see them dominating the market. Of course, the need for speed is one of the big drivers in the 3D printing world because we want prints quickly. We don't want to wait eight hours. We're happy to wait 20 minutes. And indeed, speeds have increased dramatically from somewhere around about 60 millimeters per second to 600 millimeters per second. Question, how have they actually done that? So this is the Elegoo 3 Plus and it's a couple of years old now. So believe it or not, it's getting old in the world of 3D printing. Things move quickly. And this uses that traditional way of doing things. It moves this bed plate backwards and forwards using this motor, moves this arm up and down using this motor, and then it moves the head backwards and forwards using this motor. So there are three motors to move those three directions. The thing is, this motor is hung on this arm, making this arm relatively heavy. So this is the Bamboo X1 Carbon, and it doesn't move the bed backwards and forwards, it moves it up and down, which means it's got to move the print head backwards and forwards. And if we were doing it in the traditional way, of course, we'd have to have those two motors on that head, making that very heavy. But it doesn't do that. The motors are actually in the bottom here, and they're not attached to the head at all. They're attached to this frame, making it very much more stable. But how does it drive that print head to the position that it needs to be in if those motors aren't attached? Let's imagine these two sticks are the gantry of the print head, and where they cross is the point in space that we want to get to. Now, somewhat surprisingly, there are two ways to do that. The first way is the way that we saw in the Elegoo. We move that stick that way and we can get to any point. We move that stick down, we can get to any point. We move them both together and obviously we can cover any point in space. And that's the traditional way of doing it. But it's not how it's done in the bamboo. The bamboo uses something called Core XY. And what Core XY is, is instead of hanging them that way, you have them that way. Now when we drive this anywhere, we can get across that diagonal, equally across that diagonal. If we move them both together, then we can get to any point in space moving it that way. And that's the heart of Core XY. So what are the advantages of that? Well, with the traditional method like this, we have to hang a motor on here to be able to move the print head. With the Core XY, then we don't have to hang a motor at that cross. And what that means is, 
everything's so much lighter. Like in the Delta printer that we saw, there is nothing on the print head. Now inertia is a big deal at high speeds because starting something and then stopping something is hard to do without it juddering. And with it juddering, of course, you're going to lose resolution. And if the juddering is bad enough, the whole thing will dance off your desktop. So changing from that orientation to that orientation allows faster speeds without too much juddering and so we can maintain accuracy with it and you're getting very fast and accurate machines because what they've done is turn it around. Of course they don't use sticks to do this, they use an arrangement of belts but that key feature of being able to use both motors at the same time is what distinguishes it from the Cartesian model. The Cartesian model uses one motor for one plane. In the XY model, if you move one motor, it'll move across the diagonal. But as we saw with the sticks, if you move both motors at the same time, you can find any point in the XY plane, and the motors don't need to be associated with the gantry, like in the Cartesian model. And what this means is that you get a much more robust and stable construction, leading to greater accuracy, and of course, greater speed. Now, with anything, advantages come with disadvantages. The XY belt arrangement is relatively complex and will require more maintenance in order to keep it from going off of accuracy, like stretching of the belts, and that arrangement also comes with an increase in cost. And there's another limitation to Corex machines, and that is that build plate is still being moved by a lead screw, and of course that acts as a limitation. But the huge improvement that Core XY has given in terms of speed and accuracy means that it's pretty much taking over and you're seeing it in lots and lots of machines that are coming out that are the new wave of machine. Anyway, I thought I would go through what Core XY was, how it actually works and how it relates to 3D printing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.